Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and definitely share the video. We got a good one today. Going to be uh, bringing on the I-4 Bandit. For those of you that don't know who he is, he robbed over 21 banks in a two-month period, and that was the name that they gave him. So I'm going to let him introduce himself, tell you about you know his situation, how he ended up in prison, what he was accused of, and you know he did over 20 years in federal prison. We're going to talk about his prison experience, and we're going to get into it. But again, man, don't forget about the book, Blood on the Razor Wire. Let's go. Tell the, tell the people who you are, brother, and your situation, how you ended up in prison, you know, what they called you. Just tell them who you are. Greetings and salutations. My name is David Ratcliffe, a.k.a. the I-4 Bandit. Back in 97, I robbed 21 banks single-handedly in a two-month period of time. To my knowledge, I'm the only person in American history to do that. I was charged with six armed bank robberies and six 924 C's because afterwards it was surplage, you know, on the other banks. I had an oddball bank robbery in Tallahassee. It was unarmed, and I was convicted after trial of beating the six 924 C's of six armed bank robberies and sentenced to 25 years in the Middle District of Florida, and I received 120 months concurrent and 24 months run consecutive in the Northern District of Florida. And that's a rough, that's a rough, um, there's a lot more to it. Okay, I manipulated the, the situation. I basically, I I pled to it and went to the colloquy, and because I, I pled, I pled to six bank robberies and two nine twenty four C's, and I went to the colloquy, and the and the prosecutor was saying, you know, saying is well, it, they come in the colloquy uh, with the magistrate judge accepting the plea agreement, and they and they go with well, is the prosecutor promise you anything as you've been anybody been promised you, you anything and i said well the only thing i've been promised was that i'm only facing 25 years is this true mr prosecutor the prosecutor's green she goes yeah it's, he's only facing 25 years well i knew that was a lie because the first back then it was the first 924c was five the second one was 20 okay so she was lying because the, the, just the guns were 25 years but i wanted to get up out of morgan street jail which is downtown tampa they tore it down now because it was dumb I want to get to Hernando County Jail and try to escape. I wasn't fixing to do any time. And uh, I got up there, escape attempt went wrong, ended up swallowing a handcuff key. They x-rayed it in me, spent seven days in the holding tank. They never got the key. Um, Jeb Durham actually got the key after the fact, but that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> that's, that was one of my best friends in, in the state. And I don't know if you'd know him or not, Chad, but he's the guy that, that almost got out of Lee County. Yeah. over the He got over the, the death bill fence. With, with Chevy. That was with Chevy. I know Chevy, man. Chevy actually uh, drew the tattoo, man, that I got on my chest. He drew that for me, and I had someone else tattoo it. But wow, I know Chevy, wow. man, really well. Yeah, I, I helped because I, I got I got I got mad at him because I told him I said, "Wait until you get up to, to Sarasota." You know, what I'm saying to try to try to escape because you you're never going to get out of this jail down here. It's a it's a dungeon, right? But he was all freaked out because he has the old lady was just having a kid, and he tries to get up out of uh, Morgan Street, and they caught him. And uh, he ends up in Leavenworth maybe freaking like a year and a half later after he gets done with all the stuff. He's like, Dave, you're the only person I can trust, blah, blah, blah. And he gets me in this big ass, you know, escape attempt with his ass. He gets all the way up on top of freaking a uh, uh, B cell house and he comes back down because uh, the lights shined on from one of the towers. And he hit on top of the freaking gym and they caught him there. He went to ADX for like seven years and they finally kicked him out. And then that ran him to him again at Lee County, you know, saying up, up there. Yeah. You know, when, 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 that, when that happened, but uh, yeah, um, that then I came back down. I withdrew my plea for any fair or just reason under Rule 33. Okay, no, it wasn't Rule 30, it's 31 E. Excuse me, it's been a long time since I even dealt with any kind of plea, you know, stuff. But um, because I got the transcripts, the, the public defender was like, Well, hey, look, you know, you know, I'm gonna withdraw for any you know, conflict here in just blah blah blah. And I got a, I got a guy that stuttered for a counsel who just got out of law school. And uh, he, we we're, were going to sentencing, and I, between lawyers, I filed a supplement of authority and then laid it down. And uh, the judge allowed me to withdraw my plea. Well, the prosecutor's mad at me now, and she wants to, you know, do a second superseding indictment, hit me with four, four more 924 C's, try to pressure me into to taking 36 and a half years. Like, screw you, let's go, let's run the trial. And I told a better story. Uh, 
five and a half hour jury deliver- deliberation, 36 government witnesses, two defense witnesses. And, and I basically said I had a toy gun. I had a Glock 17 9 millimeter. They never got it. They never had a gun expert. They had 36 tellers there basically saying they seen it for a couple seconds. They didn't know what it was. It could be anything. You know what I'm saying? So listen, so, you yeah. end up beating the 924 C's at trial, right? Yes. You go to prison. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What was the first prison you went to? Leavenworth. So you went to Leavenworth back then when it was a maximum security prison? Yes, in 99, yes. Who were you there with, man, that, you know, that was high profile? Because I know there's some high profile man, dudes there. I was there with Hans the Butcher, B. Lower, Hans the Butcher. I was with uh, uh, Big Big Jerry. Um, there was a uh, shoot, uh, Lonnie, uh, the, all the mobsters, the Boston mobsters were there. Uh, Sal Leone, he was there. Um, got a, a Dave. Before he became, you know, before Kentucky Dave took over uh, Big Sandy there. He, yeah. I remember him when he when he just came in and he had long hair down like in the middle of his back. You know what I'm saying? I, re- I remember him, from, you know what I'm saying, way back then. Uh, Drew, I don't know if you do, uh, uh, I can't remember Drew's damn name, um, but he he was he looked so young when he was walking down uh, the main corridor that the captain said, hey, look, you can't be on the compound. You got to go because you look like 14 years old. We had to get him out of the damn hole. Yeah. But, I mean, there's... A lot of uh, there's a lot of high, let me see who else was high profile there. Uh, there was the shoot the terrorists that, that bombed the freaking uh, the, the the towers the first time, and then when it happened, when I was there, when the the towers got hit again, and they 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 locked us down, they took them off the compound. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was a crazy spot. So listen, I mean, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get into the prison thing and stuff like that, but yeah. I had one of my one of my viewers last night, this um, woman Christina, right. She wanted me to ask you a question. She sent it to me on Instagram because you must have okay. said, hey, I'm going to go on Chad's show tomorrow for an interview. So yes, she I wants did. to know, is there anything or any woman worth going back to prison for? She wanted me to ask you that. Do you know this lady, Christina L. Alaniz? No, I don't. Well, she had, a specific, um, she had that specific question, man. Did something happen with well, you? Or No, I mean, it was nothing. I, I've never, never met her at all. I don't have no idea. The only person, okay. See, I fell in love with the ER nurse back in 97, and she, I was only out four and a half months. I just got done doing seven and a half on eight in the state of Florida. I got out April 1st, 1997. I got locked up August 23rd, 1997. Since 1986, I've been out 10 months. I've had two back to back years in driver's spinal license, Orange County Jail before that. All right. So when I went to trial, what really saved me, okay, and I've read, you know, some law reviews on this is, you know what the most trusted witness is, Chad? It's, it's, a, it's a health provider. OK. Yeah. And she was an ER nurse and she went up and testified that, you know, I lived with the man for a little while and I've never seen him with a gun, but I've seen him with a toy gun. Look, you know, saying that he played like it was real. And she was the reason why I was found not guilty of that because the jury believed her. You know what I'm saying? So why is this chick asking me to ask you that question, man? Is there anything or any woman worth going back to prison for? Is there? OK, here's here was what's I, I got to go into my code on this. Right. OK. The first of my code is is honor. I'm going to do right action regardless. If there's a kid fixing to get hit by a car and I, it's my life that I got to throw down, it's going to happen. All right. So if the woman is wrongly accused and 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 I can, you know, do something about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that hit. You know what I'm saying? And I'll, I'll fix it later. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I'm a legal mind like you. You know, so I'm not going to I'm not going to let her suffer for it because i'm that kind of person if i love her you know what i'm saying i mean if she's you know i mean I, if that, that's a hard question and that really is because i mean i just spent 23 years and 10 months of my life in prison and i wrote i went to that halfway house june 23rd of last year and on august the, the 5th of my ex uh my ex fiance the one that uh, testified for me at trial was her birthday i sent her a thank you letter telling her i was out now and i appreciate her saving my life and everything like that and she called the freaking United States attorney on me and had me locked up. Okay, so that's that's what she's saying here. She said, no, I never met him. It's okay. Don't ask. From what I understood, he got out, went to a halfway house, and had an issue, almost got caught up. It just blows my mind just thinking how or why would anyone, after so many years, take any chance of going back to prison. So Yes. So what it's happened? Easy. It sounds like it sounds like Diane trying to do something around through somebody else, tell you the truth, because... I mean, she's married. She's been married for 18 years. I even wrote her old man a letter. You know, he's a he's a he's an ex marine, and I come from a family of marines. My dad was in World War II. My mom was born in 1918. My dad was born in 1921. My brother's in Vietnam. You know what I'm saying? So 
I mean, I come from I come from a, a military family like that. So I was respectful. I said, hey, look, I'm not trying to get back with, you know, Diane or nothing like that. I just want to thank her, you know, blah, blah, blah. Next thing I know, I'm getting yacked up from the freaking from the halfway house and took into Pinellas County Jail and, and fighting a restraining order, you know what I'm saying, which I beat because okay. I kept I keep co- I keep copies of everything. You know, I'm a, I'm a legal head. Understandable. Now, check this out, yeah. man, because the shows, you know, about saving kids from life imprisonment, premature exactly. death. There's yes. prison, you know, prison content, what's real, what's not. You spend a lot of yes. your time in a USP. A lot of, you know, some people know what that are, what that is. Some people don't. So a USP is a maximum security prison, a lot of violence, a lot of danger, right? <laughs> you kidding me? Yeah. Look, I was, at, I was at the slaughterhouse of the South. I was at Pollock from 2005 to 2008. I was at Medic Orderly. I, cl- I cleaned up more blood spills and, and people got their guts cut out, dragged down the stairs. You know, there were, there was a... In 2000, I think you can, you can Google this, in 2006 or 2007, there was in 14, in a 14 month period right there, there was two double homicides, a race riot, and a total of seven murders, okay, within within that 14 month period. And, and it wasn't about, hey, let's catch a cell and fight. It was, you know, I got a problem, I'm going to stab you. You know what I'm saying? They, they took out the lockers in the place and they put in freaking the, the, the screening for the lockers. There, there, there was, there, people had tied sheets on the bunk to keep, you know, because there's no steel there. All right. It, everybody had a knife. It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? It, you, you respected the next person and you didn't, you know, hit, you got respected. That was, that was how it was. You so know? you were there. Kind of, kind of place. Let's talk about, you know what? Cause I just talked to another dude, man. And I had mentioned this. Do you remember when Bubba Sparks was killed over there? The white dude from Alabama? Yes, yes I do. Yes, I do. Let's I was talk in, about I was that. You probably, yes. you probably yes. know who Cowboy is, right? Yes. Sir. He's a rat. Yeah, I know exactly who he is. Okay, so Cowboy went back, and he was he was kind of like the shot caller for the South down there at one time, right? Keep yeah. it real now. Okay, he 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 was in. Okay, this is this is crazy. Okay, because he was in. It's A, B, and C. I, I originally was in C unit with with Gene Gotti. He was my neighbor with Freddie Puglisi. Okay, and and he's a good he's a good friend of mine. Then we we all moved over to the the honor dorm in in B unit. Okay. And that happened, we were in one, two, that we were in B3, and that happened in B2. Okay. Gar Gar was a, a Texas A B, but he's a good dude. I don't I don't care for I don't care for a lot of the Texas A Bs, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, if you're a good dude, you're a good dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what but um anyway, so I saw actually saw the video, okay, and talked to people firsthand that fucking that's actually seen what happened down there. Um a guy got up out of Marion that a, a black guy, and he was in a race ride at another another prison. OK, and he I, I noticed him there. He said on the steps there, you know, going, you know, up to up to four, you know, from two. And he the cracker this cracker that, you know, what I'm saying, you know, fuck this, fuck that. You know, excuse my language. I don't know if they can say it on this, on this thing, but, you know, there was something seriously wrong with him. Well, when you walked in the door there, you went in the little vestibule and then you came in the unit and right on the left hand side and that side. OK, was the showers and there was two curtains right there. Well, he hid out and waited for the first white guy to walk in the freaking door. And Bubba Sparks was the first white guy. He's he's doing time for felon possession of firearm. He shouldn't have been even been at that penitentiary. He was a good kid, you know what I'm saying? Respectful. You know, I, I knew him personally. Okay. And he stabbed him one time in his freaking in his juggler in his neck. And he went out into the vestibule. And, and you know what I'm saying? And the cops responded and they they shut the door. They wouldn't go in there. Well, Gar sitting over there making making poker chips, you know what I'm saying, for his for his poker table. And freaking the guy comes up and stabs him. And, and uh, you know, stabs him in, in Gar Hall's ass and he go gets the knife. Well, Cowboy's there, and he's got his knife, but doesn't do nothing. He gives Gar his knife. Okay, so Gar's got uh, one of them. It's it's the it's a pick made out of those uh, the, the threads that hold the piping. Okay, and then then uh, Cowboy had a, a knife cut out of the bunk. All right, and uh, Gar went up and started battling with the guy. Backed up, he slipped on his blood. Gar stuck that freaking rod in his ear. He wasn't dead, but they and then Bubba died because they laid him down out there in the vestibule. And he, with, but they, because uh, I was a medical orderly, I talked to the freaking the PA and the doctor, right? And they said that he was the juggler. We could have done nothing about it. I said, well, you know, you're not supposed to lay somebody down when he's drowning his own blood. And and you know, there was there was some beef about that for a second, but uh, they took the they took the the the, the they took Gar through the freaking thing and he had blood all on him. And it, it was, we've seen him go by in, in the chow hall and we were all up against the back. There was about 14 tables there and freaking, and I was up against the window and he looked at me and he said, racial. 
And I'm like, great. Okay. So, so I tell everybody, Hey, look, blah, blah, blah. Just be on, just be on point. Right. Okay. And freaking, and he goes over to medical, but then we see a guy getting wheeled across the compound. You know what I'm saying? Where they're, they're pumping his, just pumping his chest. You know, he's, he's alive. He's brain dead. Right. Okay. And they run everybody up out of medical and they bring him over to the child hall and do we want to go get some coffee to kick off the child. I mean, we're talking what, four or 500 people, you know what I'm saying? You know, going crazy in child. And, uh, the captain who was insane himself just runs in right in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? With a whole bunch, of, you know, we go out the door basically and, and, uh, kicked off all over the compound, you know, locked us all down for a month, kept us in the second cave because you, know, you got a, B and C yard and you can go out and you can talk to your defense. You know, that's, that's how that happened. But that's personal experience there. Let me ask you, you know, this. I saw, I saw that. Let me ask you this. How many people died that day? Was it two or three? It was, it was two to die that day. Yes. It was, it was the guy from DC, the black guy that, that stabbed Bubba Sparks and Bubba Sparks. Yes. Okay. That was a double homicide. There was two of those that happened like that. There was another guy that was in C unit. I was up playing Texas Hold'em and went down to pop some popcorn. And, and the one guy stabs him just one time in the vestibule and he drops and he's dead. I mean, they run over there and they check him out. And the, the nurse shakes his head and they just grab his legs and drag him out in the freaking vestibule, shut the door. We're back, back. We're going to be back to normal the next day, but they went to count and over there, freaking in B unit, B1, there's a dude that's dead in the shower. Supposedly he killed himself, you know, but he's the knife's downstairs in the trash can. You know, the, 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 the warden wanted to retire. His name is Menifee. And, and he just wiped that one underneath the table. That's the only place in, in BOP history that there's been two double homicides like that. You know what I'm saying? What were the, the second homicide? Were they white dudes, black dudes, Hispanic, Mexican? What were they? Uh, the first one was black dude. You know, well, the, 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 the one was the, the situation I told you with, with Chad and, and, and DC, I mean, with uh, uh, Bubba Sparks and the DC guy, right? Okay. The other one was a black guy in the best field, and the other one was a white guy. Uh, it's Sammy. I, I think it was some some uh, friend of Sammy's up there. In, in, I can't remember his last name, though. In, in, uh, B, in B1, yeah. What, did yeah. The, dude, the dude that, what, did the dude kill the dude? Or was it two separate dudes? Like a dude killed this dude and a dude killed that dude. Okay, yeah, two separate dudes. Two separate dudes. Like the one guy, you know, he killed the guy and he was back in the shoe screaming, uh, I didn't mean to kill him. I didn't mean to kill him. I just stabbed him once and, and that's all it takes. You know what I'm saying? Really, it takes about an inch, you know, right in a certain spot and you're dead. Uh, but, and the other one, it was like, oh, he committed suicide, but he has his laundry all done up. He's got his freaking commissary list made out and all this other stuff. And then the knife he supposedly killed himself with. You know, say is down in the trash can downstairs, and he's up in the upstairs shower. And they swept. Okay, so yeah, they swept that one underneath the table. All right, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I could tell you stories, man. Look, I caused the the, the the bleachers the bleachers at Leavenworth get tore down. Okay, that's a whole other story there. Escape attempt at freaking Leavenworth. They spent tw- I spent twenty one months of the hole at Leavenworth for getting well the the, te- the bleachers got tore down because. They found a whole bunch of escape paraphernalia around there, and they locked us up us under investigation because somebody told us, right? Okay. Then they the, they brought in ninety eight truckloads and trucks in there, and they took they took the stone bleachers down. The warden dies, O'Con- Connor dies that week of a heart attack, and freaking and it, it cost them one hundred eighty five thousand dollars to take them bleachers down, and then they got hit with a destroying a historical landmark, fifty thousand dollars after the fact. They 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 didn't like me too much there. Yeah. So. Let me ask you this. You've seen a bunch of murders in prison, and, and honestly, you laugh a little bit. And you're like, eh. Oh, man. But let me ask you this. Yeah. Did it, I mean, did you become immune to, to people getting killed in prison? Keep it real, man. Yeah, I did. I did. I seen I seen a person's throat get cut in the, in the movie theater freaking at Leavenworth, and we all sat there and watched the movie, and blood was running down the freaking down between the seats. Yeah, I've seen... I've seen some some gruesome things in prison. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm immune to it basically. It's, it's, I'm sorry to say that, but I mean, yeah. In a civilized society, for someone to say, "Hey, dude, got his throat cut," and I just sat back and kept watching the movie. Right? That right. would sound outrageous to to a person in a civilized society. But when you're living in that environment and you're living that life, man, you honestly, I mean, it's like your heart blackens, man. You become immune to it. You're just like, man. It's just another day, man. Or like, yeah, they killed that dude. I was kind of all right with him, but you just keep it moving, man. Well, I mean, Jay, you, 
your feelings, you, 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 you guard your feelings. I mean, you can, what, you know, this, okay. I mean, you, you did 18 years. I did 23 years and 10 months in feds. Okay. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a different world. Okay. You, you, you respect the next man and in certain situations, especially in the penitentiaries or you get killed. Simple as that. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. What you said. This. What you said was like, I know this. I know I because I've experienced it. Yeah, I've done a lot of time. You've done a lot of time. I've been in some dangerous, dangerous places. You have as well. But the public doesn't know. And that's why that's true. I asked that's you that. true. It's See? not about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The interview is not about me. It's about them, man. So that's I know, true. but I want you to tell them. So they understand. Yes. Yeah, so um, they can understand it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've. I've some of the things I've seen, okay, I was standing in line, going to Chow Hall, you know, a person gets stabbed and, and he's lying there bleeding. I mean, and you just keep walking. You just go around him. You know what I'm saying? You'll sit and you'll go to help him. Okay, you don't get involved because if you get involved and you get locked up and you get shipped and you get, you know, you get something thrown on you, case thrown on you, you know what I'm saying? And you, you, learn, you learn to stay away from certain things. Okay? Um, the drugs the gangs, the, um, you know, the punks, all that. Okay. Um, myself, I took a different approach. Uh, you know, I, I learned, you know, my, my belief system, I went and I researched, you know, I went back to history and researched a lot of stuff and, and I wanted to be in tune with myself and, and my ancestors. So I, I got into Odinism, you know what I'm saying? I, I, everybody and their brother wanted to pass me. Okay. I mean, I was approached by every gang in the freaking system. Okay. And I was like, look, I'm, I'm not doing it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'll, I'll be the, I'll be a guilty because that's a, I'm a religious leader. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't bring the patches out here to the circle. Okay. We're, we're, we're united here and we're to help each other. And it's not about hate. Okay. And, and I had to, some of these kids that were, were got spun up by some of these gangs. It was really, really a, you know, a challenge to, to open their eyes to say, Hey, look, it's not about that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, yeah, you could everybody, if you believe in your people, cool. All right, you know what I'm saying? But th that doesn't mean you have to hate the next person. You know what I'm saying? All the people in life, the four life sentences I got off people, they're all from a different race. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the sentences I've overturned were, you know what I'm saying? Because that's right action to me. Okay, that's honor. You know, that's why the Syrian Code of Nine is older than the, the, the nine noble virtues. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's a belief system thing. You know, and I, I, I truly believe in that. Okay, I believe in right action and charges me up, and then my ancestor blesses me, you know what I'm saying, through, uh, you know, basically being in tune with myself and my surroundings. You know what I'm saying? Hence, I met you. I hear, I hear you. Let me, let me ask you this, right? When you were robbing banks, how old were you? I was 30 years old. I turned 31 in, in, in uh, a Waikiki Beach at, at the Outrider Motel. Yep. Were you, uh, were you using drugs at the time? Smoking weed. That's it. So what motivated you to start robbing banks, man? 21 banks? What made you, you do? <laughs> they asked me that. They asked me that when the Band-Aid Bandits, they came and interviewed me at Pollock, right? Because the Band-Aid Bandits ran, robbed like 36 banks. I said, before the Band-Aid Bandits, there was the I-4 Bandit. And they asked me, he says, well, why did you rob, why did you rob so, so many banks? And I said, well, it, was, it would have been harder to take candy from a baby because the baby's going to cry. The bank's program would give you the money. I walked into that first bank because I just got out of a state prison. And I couldn't get a job as a landscape laborer, as a cook. Okay, I was a certified metal fabricator. You know what I'm saying? I got all my schooling and everything in the freaking state. And they were fixing to violate me in two days. And I was like, okay, well, screw going back to a 50, 54 man unit with two exhaust fans and six ceiling fans. And you fight all day long. Okay, I'll go to the feds where there's AC. That's my stupid ass thinking. So I walked, I literally walked up the street two blocks, stood in line for 20 minutes and handed a note to a teller. And I caught a commercial teller by accident and it had no bag and walked out with $18,600. And it went right by the bank with the freaking in a taxi cab while all the top cars were sitting there. Okay. That was the worst thing that happened to me because number one, it was a rush. Me cocaine in the eighties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when I was freaking moving that stuff. Okay. Well, luckily I got the freaking locked up in the county jail. You know, and then going collecting my money in, in the state, and I get me caught in that stuff. Okay, that's a whole other story. I've done beating four, at least three life sentences. In the 105 mandatory, I had a, I had some charges that I ran the. Uh, let me see, I ran I ran the statute of limitations on the administrative room retainers act, and they dismissed them. Um, and uh, that basically from the 80s that I never, you know, I never got hooked into. 
but I'm respected by the people that were in Miami at the time, you know? So I just, <laughs> I, I've had a hell of a life. And that's why I'm, I'm trying to write this, trying this book. I mean, written because it's like it's 1250 pages but it's all in typeset and and i can't just put that in the system i gotta read it in and then eli gonzalez who's called the international ghost writer he's gonna help me write it you know he's gonna finance and all that stuff hey man i'm i apologize for yawning i've been up since five that's all right that's all right you know i mean i'm a long time actually i'm a long time i've been up since five too so now let me ask you this right what was the worst prison you were ever in um I'd say, well, uh, Big Sandy wasn't like that. Well, it was like that when I was there in 2017, 2018. But by hands down, it was Pollock between 2006 and 2008. Yeah. Was Big Sandy still jumping when you were there? Oh, yeah. It still, it still was kicking. I mean, there's people getting life lighted up out of there. There's people getting stabbed to death. You know, I, I was in, actually, I was in, uh, in a unit. You know where uh, Kentucky Dave is, is used to have that big cell up there with uh, um, God dang it, who's the guy from um, he's from Ohio. He always he always ran out. He always ran with fucking Kentucky Dave living from there for a while. Uh, I don't can't remember his name though right now. Anyway, so yeah, but I mean, you remember Puppet? Yeah, the Mexican yeah Mexican Mafia. That was that was my friend up there when they when he ate, I ate with him. Um, Bird, the um, Sereno. That he was he was a friend of mine when they ate freaking you know I ate with him. Um, I had the unit up there that was uh, twenty three white idiots. You know what I'm saying that I had to look out for and I, I mean I called them all in the room and, and told them how I was and and then went around to the freaking unit and said hey look anybody freaking gives anything to any white dude in here you know what I'm saying on credit they've done giving it to them there ain't no beef about it so don't give nobody nothing and and then somebody come up from Atlanta get a whole bunch of dope bring it up there, you know what I'm saying? And then the other guy, people wouldn't tell him about it in the interview. Hey, man, blah, 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 and this and that. Like, look, they should have told you. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no beef. There ain't nothing. You should have never gave him nothing. So let me ask you, know, you this, right? kill that. Let's talk about this. I, I, we're going to have to bring you on, man, again, right? We're almost at the 30-minute right. mark. I try to keep the videos at 30 minutes, right? Man, I'm fucking fine. So we'll, 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 we'll do this again, but let me ask you this. How did it feel, man, to walk out of prison after all those years, man? scary i'll tell you the truth it, it was scary because i mean and look it's still it's still i still don't fit i went down to the bolts bolts parade the other day you know what i'm saying down there on riverwalk and, and everybody's having a great time and i'm just there like a you know the third wheel you know i mean i don't fit anywhere i mean for real <laughs> i haven't i haven't really um, i met somebody that i knew for you know i, I got in contact with her i knew her for seven years you know, from 2014, she's up in Massachusetts now. Her name's uh, Joe Marie, and um, she's been inspirational to me in, in keeping my head head straight. I don't, I'm not going to do nothing wrong again. My pride is 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 uh, I've, I've swallowed that, you know. But it's just it's different. I'll say that. I understand, man. I'm I'm happy that you're home, man. That you finally got your freedom. You know, like I said, yeah. man, the show's directed, man, to save kids from life imprisonment and premature exactly. death. If you could that's, talk, that's to your, what I want to do. If you could talk to your younger self and give yourself a message, what would you say to your younger self about Robin Banks and just you know the consequences? What would you say now, in hindsight? Now that you've been to prison, lost twenty five years of your life, what would you tell your younger self, man? Well, Chad, I lost thirty four years of my life, and and I've had ten months free since nineteen eighty six. But uh, I would say that. A younger person's pride does come before fall, okay? And and not to dramatize or blow things up because the next person, you know, you think this is something special or the next person is going to look up to you about it or that you can do it and get away with it and, and not get caught because, I mean, my dumb ass, I mean, if I, I, I just kept going, I wouldn't have been caught. I would have been in freaking South Pacific, but my heart, you know, pulled me back into freaking getting, you know, into Florida, you know, with the CR nurse, and then they tracked her to me, you know, in once in Mississippi, the whole airport was on the FBI wait for me. That's a whole other story. But I would say the slow road, okay, is better than the fast road. Easy money is not respected. When you work and you earn your money, then it's respected. You know, for the younger generation, and 
I want to create that's you're going in the same direction that I want to go. Okay. And but I want to create hotlines for people that are in the system that they're getting messed over because I literally, Chad, I shut down Goodwill Suncoast halfway house here in Florida. Okay. They had they were that's a multi million dollar contract because I, I mean I stepped in like like a man and said, Hey, look, I couldn't caught you stealing money. Okay. I'm I'm smart. All right, here it is, you know, try to fix it. Oh no, screw you, you know, most arrogant, ignorant person you ever met in your life. Go say, okay, look, I'm a paralegal legal system here. Here's the paperwork I'm gonna file. Can we meet me halfway and fix this? No, go ahead and file your paperwork. Well, since the computer dish systems were all hooked up into freaking, you know, the American Correctional Association and everything else, I shot to them. I shot to freaking Washington, D.C. They came down and audited their ass. They fired a director. They lost the contract. They shut down on August 31st. And for that, I spent 10 months, well, eight months of the of the last year in, in the Pinellas County Jail, four months halfway house. But the next person that comes there, you know, past August 31st, will get the least treatment. There were no counselors, there was no, you know, psychologists, there was nothing. And, you know, that 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 means something to me. It's, that's right action. I'm going to do right action regardless, Chad. So whatever I can do to help, you know, what I'm saying I'm I'm here to help. I've, I've got I've got this. You know, what I'm saying I'm very smart. You know, this is what we're gonna do. Me and you are gonna stay in contact. We're probably gonna do a part two about prison and prison stories, man. I'm gonna bring you on for that. But I'm gonna um I'm gonna close the show, man. We're at 31 minutes. And, you know, yeah. Just want to tell people, man, leave a comment. I'm sure you'll respond to the comments if people want to say stuff. Um, yes. Blood on the razor wire. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. We got to get these yes. subscribers up, man. We got a mission. We're working on it. I try to bring everybody the best content. So today, man, I just want you to know we brought the I-4 bandit, and he's got a lot more to say, and we will definitely talk about it. So until tomorrow, Blood on the Razor Wire TV, and we're out. Peace out.